A lot of work's been going on on board the International Space Station to return one of the EMUs, the extravehicular mobility units, uh, the U.S. spacesuits, back to service. I'm um, Scott Kelly back inside the airlocks today, but he's been in there quite a bit over the last week. And today we're going to learn a little bit more about what's been going on. Joining me here in Mission Control Houston today, one of our EVA experts, Alex Canalecos. Alex, you're kind of a regular on this show nowadays. We always bring you in when we're talking about these spacesuits, and uh, it's really great to have you here with us now to give us a little bit more insight into what's been going on. Well, good morning, Dan. Glad to be here. So first, I mean, just set it up for us. What's been going on? Because we've heard this is some of the most invasive, some of the most complex repair work you guys have ever had to do on these spacesuits. What's been happening? Right. So um, what we've been dealing with is a, a failure of one of our fan pump separators, and this is uh, what I'm holding here to Today it's a it's a uh, 3D rapid prototype of our fan pump water separator, and um, we've had several issues on orbit with with the fan pump separators. Mm -hmm. And recently, well, in February, we actually had a, another failure, and we decided that we would remove the fan pump separator from EMU 3011. It w this suit was scheduled to come home uh, this summer on uh, SpaceX, and um, uh, we decided, well, we'll bring the water separator and the fan pump uh, home early mm -hmm. and just leave that suit with the, an open cavity. Well, unfortunately, our resupply, our new spacesuit that yep. was also supposed to launch on SpaceX, did not make it. And um, instead of uh, uh, bringing the old 3011 home, we had to put a new fan pump separator in, installed into this open cavity mm -hmm. and uh, get it back to service, get the EMU back to service. And so... In order to do that, it, like you mentioned, it's very invasive. Um, we're opening cavities that were never meant to be open during uh, on-orbit phases. Mm -hmm. So on the ground, of course, when the spacesuit gets home, the engineers do a lot of servicing on, yep. on, the, on the different pieces. Um, there's very small screws, small shims that they'll take apart. And um, it was never designed to do that on orbit. And uh, the reason that this is, is, is really um, critical that we do it right is these small pieces could really damage the suit, especially when we go out EVA. It's something oh, yeah. that we don't want to have floating around inside the spacesuit. So that's part of it. Another part of it is once we get the fan pump separator installed, there's a lot of water maintenance that has to happen. Our suit is very sensitive to water impurities, mm -hmm. and so we have to um, basically scrub the water that's going through the suit. Uh, we also have to add iodine to help combat any of the organic um, components inside the suit, and that's what we've been doing the last uh, week. So Scott and Chell have both been working on the suit, and they've been uh, installing the fan pump separator. We also did a, a couple uh, more maintenance activities mm -hmm. such as a gas trap removal and replace and a waterline vent tube. So several components we replaced on the spacesuit. And then we got into our water maintenance. So last week we did a water uh, dump and fill where we dumped our, our old water and filled it with new water. And then we started this week with scrubbing the water. And today we're doing a structural uh, integrity test to make okay. sure that the fan pump separator was installed correctly and that we're not going to have any leakage when we go outside the next time. Okay, and you kind of touched on it, but you know, why is it important to, to do these uh, upgrades, make sure these suits are ready to go? Even though, I mean, we're not doing an EVA tomorrow, why, why is it important to have this thing, you know, ready for prime time? I'm ready to go. Right. So we the the design of the EVAs is that we'd always have four spacesuits ready to go okay. at all times. And the reason for that is that we never know when when one spacesuit's not going to necessarily check out correctly. We want to give our crew members the best suits to go out the door with. You know, spacesuit is like its own spacecraft. Mm -hmm. Once it's disconnected from umbilical and goes out in, during an EVA, uh, it it's on its own. It's its life support. Everything is there for the crew members. So we want to make sure we're giving the best spacesuits for our crew members. And and in addition to that, the spacesuits are sized um, differently. So mm -hmm. uh, the hard upper torso, ha it, there's three different sizes. And so they're connected to the life support. And so those are, have different sizes. And so in order to give us the best complement of spacesuits with the crew members that we have on board, we have different sized huts. And, and to uh, basically strategically match what spacewalks could happen, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's how we size our spacesuits. There are... Um, like you mentioned, there are no scheduled EVAs in the near future. There are some talks about some EVAs happening in late October, early November time frame. Um, but we can always have the need to go out the door. Yeah. If, if we have a major failure of space station where we have to go and replace a, a 
critical component. That's why we have to be ready with our spacesuits. Okay, and so you, you said, so there's, once this one's back online, there's going to be four suits. And then aside from the suits, you guys have spares and other things like that on board too. Like you had a spare fan pump ready to go. You know, what's what's the state of supplies for all that? That's correct. So we, we do have several uh, spares of the critical components of our life support. In addition, we have lots of spares of our... Um, what we call the soft goods, more the sizing mm -hmm. uh, portions, and that allows us to adapt to the different crew members. We're, we're fine as far as spares are considered yeah. on orbit right now. Okay, and one thing you had touched on earlier that I thought was interesting was these suits weren't designed to necessarily be repaired like this. So, I mean, what this has to be a really difficult task. You know, take something, and I assume you do a lot of work here on, down on the ground first, but to figure out how to fix something that was never meant to be fixed in this fashion. That's correct. So we work hand-in-hand -hand with the uh, ground engineers to develop procedures for the crew members to repair the spacesuit mm -hmm. and do this invasive uh, removal and replacement of critical components. So you're right that we, we have to design new procedures. Uh, we also work with the crew on on just training them. All right, these are these are components that are, are loose. Once you release the screw, it's it's free. Um, so we have to be prepared for that. We use a lot of uh, Kapton tape, and, mm -hmm. and um, we even have a vacuum cleaner with a netting over it ready to capture anything that comes comes loose that the crew members wow. aren't able to grab. And and that's really important. And in addition, um, some of the the things that you don't think about on on the ground is that um, you have to have. Uh, ways to restrain your body when you're up there. So mm -hmm. the suit, um, in order to install this fan pump separator, it can't be structurally um, attached so that it's completely rigid. Um, we actually have to allow it to to kind of move in order uh. to, to gain access to this area. And so that can be really difficult for yeah. the crew members because they're, they're not restrained um, as far as, as normally being restrained, like you're, you have two feet on the ground, so we have to, you know, give them advice of, all right, here's a good handhold here, and and things like that, mm -hmm. while they use the tools on. So order. we're having to repair something that wasn't meant to be repaired in an environment that we can't test, and uh, I mean, it, it sounds tough. So, I mean, we're we're always looking forward. We're always looking forward. What are some of the things, you know, we've been using this suit for decades now. What are some of the things that we're learning from having to do this kind of stuff on space station that we're hopefully going to be able to apply to suits, you know, when we're heading off to Mars. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, the spacesuits, in, in big picture, people think of spacesuits as this is how you're using the, the space station as far as maintaining it. You know, mm -hmm. the spacesuits allow us to get basically into our uh, uh, mobility to go outside the door and repair things and, and make sure that we're keeping our space station uh, up and running. But in addition, we are using the spacesuits as kind of an experiment in themselves when we go to different locations or, or to even improve on the next spacesuit. So we are learning a lot of things. Just doing the removal and replacement, we're learning, all right, we need to design our next spacesuit so that we can gain access to mm -hmm. critical components easier. Uh, we need to make sure that the fasteners and the bolts that are installed are captive so that when you release them they're not going to be it's floating not away. Go flying away right yeah. so there's there's a lot of those things in addition we're we're learning um, design because of what cr caused the failure we're learning how to design you know new components you know, so that they're more resistant to water impurities mm -hmm. and they're more resistant to uh, corrosion, things like that. Okay. Well, again, a lot of really invasive, but a lot of really important work taking place in those spacesuits over the last week or so on board space station. Alex Canalecos, our local resident EVA expert, giving us the inside look. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Thank you, Dan.